there, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library and we're ready for story time online. I've been noticing a lot of people out in their yards getting their gardens ready, finding plants to put in the ground and getting the soil all ready. So we're gonna have stories about things you would grow in a garden. And to help me is my friend, Cornelius. Hello there, Cornelius. Can you tell what he is? If you guessed an ear of corn, you're right. And we're going to hear a whole lot of vegetables names in our first book, which is a vegetable chant called Ra Ra Radishes. It's written and illustrated by April Pulley Sayer, and it is published by Beach Lane Books. Well, Ra Ra Radishes, red and white. Carrots are calling. Take a bite. Oh boy, bok choy and Brussels sprouts. Broccoli, cauliflower, shout it out. Pile up peppers, bananas and bells. Did you know there are peppers that are banana peppers? Taste very different from a banana banana. Crunch their colors and smell their smells. Call for cayenne and pick poblamo. Hola, habanero, jalapeno, serrano. Lettuce, lima, go green bean. Cucumbers, cool, kohlrabi's cream. Aren't kohlrabi's interesting looking? Eggplants extraordinary. Pumpkins art. Don't eat zucchini? It's time to start. Snag some sweet corn. Shuck an ear. Celebrate celery and give a cheer. Onion, scallion, leek, and shallot. Grab that garlic and please your palate. Head for the cabbages and greens for sale. Fall for fennel, Swiss chard, kale. Root for rutabagas and bounce for beets. Pile up parsnips, turnip treats. Stash some squash. Fill your cupboard. Butternut, buttercup, acorn, and hubbard. Potatoes and tomatoes. Yum a yam. Slice them, mash them, wham, wham, wham. Ask for asparagus. Pea pods, please. Thank you, farmers. Thank you, bees. Sun and seasons, leaf and stalk. Know them, grow them. Vegetables rock. Look at all those colors. Aren't they wonderful? If you ever go to a farmer's market, look at all the different colors you have. And they say that it's very healthy to eat all the colors of the rainbow. So reds and yellows and oranges, greens. You're hard to find blues, but blueberries are tasty, even if they're not a vegetable. And purples for eggplants and some of the lettuces. Lots of wonderful things to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, should we do a finger play about something that you won't find at the farmer's market probably? Can you get your hot dogs ready? I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. 
So that means one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, I think I heard some of you say, oh, I don't like vegetables. Well, that's exactly what happens in this book. It's called Rabbit Food, and it's by Susanna Gretz. She wrote it, and she does the pictures, and it's published by Canda Wick Press. Look at all those veggies. Celery, tomatoes, peas, carrots, and mushrooms. That's rabbit food. Danny and Debbie, oh, love all of it. John does not. Don't you want to grow up big and strong, asked his mom. No, said John. Why not, asked dad. Because grown-ups eat celery and tomatoes and peas and carrots, says John. And worst of all, mushrooms. Well, the truth is, John hardly eats any rabbit food at all. Maybe he's just not hungry enough, says mom. Maybe Uncle Bunny can help, says Dad. So Dad makes a quick phone call, and the very next day, Uncle Bunny arrives. Everyone is glad to see him. Now we're off for the weekend, says Mom. Uncle Bunny will look after you. There's food in the kitchen, says Dad. And please see that John eats some of everything. No problem, says Uncle Bunny. He looks like he's a fun uncle, doesn't he? Well, at lunchtime, John builds a bridge with his carrots and celery and tomatoes. Eat up, says Uncle Bunny. They're delicious. Yuck, says John. Eat your rabbit food and you'll grow big and strong like me, says Uncle Bunny. But when no one is looking, Uncle Bunny hides his carrots under his napkin. Do you think Uncle Bunny doesn't like vegetables? Hmm. At supper, John makes a cave with his toast and he hides his peas and mushrooms underneath. Try some, says Uncle Bunny. Just one teeny tiny bite. They're good for you. Yuck, says John. Eat your rabbit food and you'll grow big and strong like me, says Uncle Bunny. But when no one is looking, Uncle Bunny hides his carrots in the flower pot. The next morning, they all play soccer. And then bunny hop, bunny jump, excuse me. And then tug of war, the three of them against Uncle Bunny. And they get quite hungry. Everyone, even John, digs into Sunday lunch. It's baked potato rabbits. The eyes are peas. The noses are mushrooms. The mouths are pieces of tomato. The whiskers are pieces of celery. And the ears are carrots. Well, that is all except for Uncle Bunny's rabbit. Hmm. Why doesn't your bunny have ears, Uncle Bunny? Uncle Bunny doesn't seem to hear. Hurry up and eat, he says. We're off to climb a mountain this afternoon. Well, Debbie reaches the mountaintop first. And that evening, everyone is very hungry. Uncle Bunny puts what's left of the food on the table, but first he wants to watch the news. Help yourself, he tells the little rabbits. Well, John is so hungry, he eats lots of everything. Now Uncle Bunny wants some food too, but there's not a scrap left on the table. All that's left in the kitchen is a bunch of carrots. You don't like carrots, do you, Uncle Bunny? Says John. Well, I, uh, no, says Uncle Bunny. But they're delicious, yells John, and everyone jumps on Uncle Bunny. They're good for you. 
Just try a little, just one teeny tiny bite and you'll grow big and strong like us. Uncle Bunny bites off a very tiny piece of carrot. He chews it very slowly. And then he bites off another tiny piece and another. And just then, Mom and Dad appear. I did the best jump, Danny tells them. I climbed the mountain first, says Debbie. I ate celery and tomatoes and carrots and peas, says John, and mushrooms. Well, Mom and Dad are delighted. However did you do it, Uncle Bunny, asked Dad. You're terrific, says Mom. Uncle Bunny doesn't answer because his mouth is full of carrots. In fact, he says at last, they're not bad. So I guess everybody learned to like their vegetables, all of them. Well, can you make bunny ears? Since that story was all about bunnies, can you put up your two fingers and pretend that's a bunny? And with the other hand, can you bring your thumb around so that your other fingers touch it and you can see that it makes a hole? And that's gonna be where your bunny's gonna hop. Here is a bunny with his ears so funny. And here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears why he pricks up his ears and he hops in his hole with a bow. Well, I know something we're planting in our garden, and sometimes when we plant it, it gets carried away and we have way too much. And that's exactly what happens in the story called Zora's Zucchinis. This is written by Katherine Pryor and illustrated by Anna Raff. And it's published by Readers to Eaters. That's a good name for a company to deal with books about food. It was only the third day of summer vacation, but Dora was already out of ideas. Zora rode her bike in large, lazy circles around the neighborhood, just like the day before that, and the day before that. When Zora rode by the hardware store, she noticed something new, a bunch of plants with fuzzy green leaves. Can you see them? And look what the sign says. Huh. It says, free, Zora was reading out loud, free zoo key me. Z like me, she said. So she filled her basket with zucchini plants and headed home. Look what I found, Zora announced. Zucchini, I'm gonna plant it in the garden. So Zora dug big holes so the roots had room to grow and she settled the plants in snugly in the soil. She watered each one. That's gonna be a lot of zucchini, said her father. We'll eat it, Zora promised. Well, as June warm turned to July hot, Zora tended her garden. She watered the plants when their leaves got droopy. She cheered every time she saw new yellow zucchini blossoms. And one morning, Zora spotted her very first zucchini. She snapped it off the vine with a quick twist and raced in to show her family. Zora's family found a new way to cook zucchini every day. Her brother made bread, her sister made soup, her parents marinated and grated and barbecued. And as Zora's garden grew, they ate zucchini for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. More, Zora offered. Well, by the 1st of August, Zora's garden was a jungle of prickly, tickly, bushy, blossomy plants, and every single one of those plants was covered in zucchini. There was no way her family could eat it all. 
Zora stepped into her neighbor's garden and she peeked in over the fence. The garden was full of tomatoes, but no zucchini. Hi, Mrs. Thompson. Would you like to trade some tomatoes for some zucchini? Absolutely, Mrs. Thompson replied. So Zora swapped an armful of zucchini for an armful of tomatoes. And Zora's zucchini kept growing. This is crazy, she said. She loaded up her bike and gave every last one away. But the next day, Zora found even more zucchini. Seriously, she said. Well, Zora thought and thought, and she had an idea, but she knew she couldn't do it alone. Her brother painted the signs, her parents printed the flyers, and Zora and her sister posted them all over the neighborhood. And on Saturday, Zora's garden swap was open for business. The sign says, take a veggie, leave a veggie, or at least please take some zucchini. Can you see that? Zora straightened her sign. She checked the time. The sun got hotter. Zora's feet got fidgetier, and she began to worry that her garden swap was a garden flop. Nobody came by. But then Zora saw Mrs. Rivera carrying a big bowl of raspberries and Mr. Peterson was bringing potatoes. Neighbors stopped by with carrots, peppers, and green beans from their gardens. They shared plums, apricots, and cherries from their trees. People left whatever they had too much of and took whatever they wanted. Zora traded and traded until all her zucchini were gone. Zora looked around the busy, noisy jumble of munching and laughing and chatting neighbors. Her zucchini garden had brought so many people together and she was already plotting what to grow next summer. And then at the back, they talk about growing a garden and if you get too many what you can do about it do you ever get too many zucchini i know sometimes our zucchini gets to be instead of being about this big they get to be about this big and great big ones all around so we have to make zucchini bread and people are very happy to, to have that given to them all right well let's do another finger play and i'm thinking hmm Let's have a monkey climbing up a tree. I don't know if we've done that in a while. Can you get your monkey ready? And pretend you've got a tree in front of you. The itsy bitsy monkey climbed up the coconut tree. Down came a coconut and it popped him on the knee. Along came his mommy who kissed away the pain. Then the itsy bitsy monkey climbed up the tree again. Well, I don't know if there are vegetables that you don't like, but I didn't know that monsters don't eat broccoli. I can't imagine why. This is written by Barbara Jean Hicks and illustrated by Sue Hendra, and it's published by Alfred A. Knopf. The waitress in this restaurant just doesn't have a clue. Monsters don't eat broccoli. How could she think we do? We'd rather snack on tractors. Or a rocket ship or two. Or tender trailer tidbits. Mmm. Or wheelie steely stew. Fum, fo, fi, fi, monsters don't eat broccoli. Monsters don't eat broccoli or artichokes or greens. We can't abide alfalfa sprouts or slimy lima beans. But redwoods are delectable. And boulders, oh, what a treat. That's another word for rock. 
and a fountain so refreshing in this dreadful summer heat. Fum, fo, fi, fi, monsters don't eat broccoli. We're crazy for construction. Oh my goodness, they're eating tall buildings and stop signs. And we crave our fish and ships. But monsters don't eat broccoli. It will not pass our lips. You cannot force us monsters to eat vegetables we hate. Let humans have the garden. We'll eat the garden gate. Fum, fo, fi, fi. Monsters don't eat broccoli. I almost couldn't find the words that are on the signs that they're carrying. Well, monsters love a picnic on a blanket in the park with a clump of giant maples and their yummy gummy bark. Fum, fo, fi, fi. Hey, you're chowing down on broccoli. Say what? This isn't broccoli. It's crunchy munchy trees. And wow, they're delicious. Were they really monsters? No, they were children. And they found out that broccoli, pretty yummy. Another helping, please. <laughs> well, there were five little monsters who were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, well, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So hide one away. Four little monsters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So three little monsters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So that leaves two little monsters jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monster jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head and her mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monsters jumping on the bed. So we're gonna jump into a garden bed and say good night to the veggies. This is a book by Diana Murray and Zachariah O'Hara. And it's published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Sunset in the Garden. Robins in their nest. Tossing, turning veggies need to get some rest. Turnips tucked in tightly. Potatoes closing eyes. Can you close your eyes? Okay, open them up because we're going to turn the page. Tuckered out tomatoes humming lullabies. Cuddling cauliflowers. Droopy pods of peas. Look who's coming up. Rhubarbs reading stories to worn out broccolis. Baby carrots snuggling, baby lettuce too. Baby eggplants dreaming of places far and new. Cucumbers are calm, lined up nice and neat. 
garden yams are still, and beets are simply eat. Cabbages are nodding their leafy, sleepy heads, and radishes are do dozing in cozy garden beds. Celery is snoring as sunset disappears. Cranky corn rolls over and covers up its ears. Every veggie snoozing beneath the moon so bright. For nothing's more exhausting than growing day and night. You see the worms in bed too? He's taking a rest. Good night, sleepy veggies. Sleep tight. Well, can you wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes? Can you wiggle your shoulders? And how about your nose? Use your finger if you want. Can you wiggle both your elbows and slap your knees? and stretch your arms way up. And then get ready, please, for our flannel board story. And this is the story called The Big Turnip. Now, once upon a time, there was an old farmer who loved turnips more than anything else in the whole world. So he planted a seed in the ground, right there, like that. He watered it and weeded it, and he waited for it to grow. First, it grew just a little. And then it grew a lot until the farmer could tell that he had a great, big, enormous turnip in the ground and he was ready to pull it up. So the farmer bent over to pick it and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled, but the turnip wouldn't come up. So he called to his wife and he said, fee fi fo fum. I pulled on this turnip, but it wouldn't come up. Would you help? So his wife came to help. She grabbed onto the farmer and the farmer grabbed onto the turnip. And they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but the turnip wouldn't come up. So the wife called to their daughter. She said, fee, fi, fo, fum. We pulled on the turnip, but it wouldn't come up. Would you help? So their daughter came to help. She grabbed onto her mother, and the mother grabbed onto the farmer, and the farmer grabbed onto the turnip. And they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but the turnip wouldn't come up. So the daughter called to their dog and said, fee, fi, fo, fum. We pulled on the turnip, but it wouldn't come up. Would you help? So the dog came to help. He grabbed onto the girl and the girl grabbed onto her mother and the mother grabbed onto the farmer and the farmer grabbed onto the turnip. And they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but the turnip wouldn't come up. So the dog said to the cat, could you help us? So the cat came to help them pull up that turnip. She grabbed onto the dog and the dog grabbed onto the girl and the girl grabbed onto the mother and the mother grabbed onto the farmer and the farmer grabbed onto the turnip. Let's move her back just a little bit. And they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but the turnip wouldn't come up. So the cat said, I'll go ask the mouse to help us. And the others just laughed and said, the mouse, he's too little. But the cat went anyway. And she said, fee, fi, fo, fum. We pulled on this turnip, but it wouldn't come up. Would you help? And the little mouse said, help you? Well, I could probably pull that turnip out of the ground all by myself. But since you're already all here, I'll lend a paw. So the mouse grabbed onto the cat, and the cat grabbed onto the dog, and the dog grabbed onto the girl, 
and the girl grabbed onto the mother, and the mother grabbed onto the farmer, and the farmer grabbed onto the turnip. And they pulled, and they pulled, and they pulled, and they pulled, and pop! <laughs> Out of the ground came that great big, enormous turnip. He was huge. And the little mouse was so proud of himself that he stepped back, rubbed his paws together, and see, I told you I could pull it out. And I guess he was right, because I know for a fact that they all had that turnip cooked in a pie for supper, and it was delicious. So those are our veggie tales. I better probably shouldn't say that. That's a copyrighted term, but those are our veggie stories for today. And I know Cornelius loved them, and I hope you enjoyed them too. Thanks for tuning in, and check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. We'll see you another time. Bye-bye. Oh, and remember, eat your veggies. They're good for you.